DAOs are gaining a lot of traction in the blockchain space. They are a crucial building block for the next version of the internet, Web 3.0. But what is a DAO and how does a DAO work? We'll answer these questions and more in this video. The best way to understand a new concept is by relating to something we are familiar with. So, in order to understand DAOs, let's start with a concept we come across every day. Organizations or more informally clubs. Suppose you are part of a football club. To promote the club, all the members contributed some money to the club's fund. When the club gets big enough, it will naturally have a management structure with roles like manager, treasurer, etc. The management is expected to lead the club and they have access to the club's fund. You have to trust them to be honest and use the money only to promote the interests of the club. The future of the club relies heavily on the integrity and ability of these few people. The key here is trust, something that's broken all too often these days. This is where DAOs can help. Why do we need a DAO? Well, in this example, if you use a DAO to run the club, you don't need to trust anyone else in the group. Just the DAO's code, which is 100% transparent and verifiable by anyone. DAO will facilitate coordination among members to achieve the goals of the group. What is a DAO? At its core, a DAO is a smart contract, a piece of code which defines the rules of how the organization should run. Unlike traditional organizations, there is no hierarchy to DAOs. To align the interests of the organization with that of its members, DAOs incentivize their users to achieve their goal. A key distinction from traditional organization is that the control is decentralized. How do DAOs work? Forming a DAO typically involves the following steps. Establishing a cause. First, you need a reason to form a DAO. It can be anything that brings people together. For example, things like forming a charitable trust. People from around the world donate money to the trust and the group can decide how they want to spend donations. An investment fund or simply giving the users the right to govern an organization. Once the purpose is established and the rules of how the DAO runs are written into smart contracts, they typically enter a funding phase. Anyone who wishes to be part of the DAO can contribute to the DAO's fund and the DAO will issue tokens proportional to the size of their contribution. These tokens will give you voting rights to steer the direction of the DAO. This is similar to how companies issue shares today, except DAOs are more decentralized. At the end of the funding phase, the DAO is considered live and operational. Moving forward, all key decisions surrounding the organization are made through governance. All users who own the DAO tokens vote on proposals. The weight of their votes will be proportional to the share of the tokens they hold. So, if the DAO issued a total of 1000 tokens and you hold 100 of them, your vote will carry a 10% weight. When a consensus is reached, the result of the vote can be automatically actioned by the DAO's code. How are DAOs being used today? Here is an overview of the DAO landscape. Pretty much every reputable DAP or protocol uses a DAO structure. Uniswap, Aave, Curve, all popular protocols with billions of dollars at stake are controlled by DAOs. Malak DAO is funding the development of public infrastructure related to ETH 2.0. People are also using DAOs to invest together. For example, if you want to buy an NFT from the BAYC collection, the cheapest one is 83 ETH, nearly $300,000. Even if you have that kind of money, it's a lot of risk for most people. So instead, you could form a DAO pull funds from people and buy a few NFTs through the DAO. This way you can diversify your collection and have fractional ownership of many expensive NFTs. Social DAOs like Gitcoin are providing grants to fund builders and creators for their work. Personally, I hope to apply for a Gitcoin grant if this channel gets enough traction. So you would do me a huge favor by hitting that subscribe button. Benefits There are several benefits to using a DAO to run an organization such as transparency. Since all actions of a DAO are public, this builds trust with the community. Decentralization. DAOs eliminate the need for central hierarchies like management boards. Strong sense of community. People in a DAO community feel valued and often more engaging because they have a say in the future of the organization. It's not all sunshine and rainbows though. DAOs have their share of downsides too. Bugs in code exposes them to risk of hacking. In fact, the first ever DAO called the DAO was hacked and 3.6 million Ether were stolen from the DAO's fund. 
That's over $12 billion at today's prices. Delays from voting. Given the decentralized nature of DAOs, each proposal needs to be voted on by the community and that can take a few days to weeks. While this is good under normal circumstances, this is a big issue when developers want to fix a critical bug but need community approval. In the case of the DAO, a fix was available but the community couldn't reach consensus in time to apply the fix and the result was a devastating hack. I want to finish on a positive note. Most DAOs today are basically copies of well-tested DAO frameworks. There are not minimal code that went through a lot of scrutiny. So there is less scope for bugs. If you find DAOs that align with your values, I think it's worth being part of that community. After all, we are all working towards building a better world. If you found this helpful, hit that like button, subscribe to my channel and check out my other videos. Thanks for watching. This is Praveen and I'll see you again soon.